Greetings, brothers and sisters. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. As children of God that gather under the banner of African Methodism, we believe that it's important not only to preach and teach about spiritual formation and Christian discipleship, but we think that it's also important to speak to the cares and concerns that will have an effect on the day-to-day -day lives of our people. This past week, a trial concluded and a verdict went forth. And this verdict was more than just about the guilt and innocence of the one who stood trial, but it was about the conscience of America and about the guilt and innocence of the American Constitution, whether or not there really is liberty and justice for all. As a pastor in the African Methodist Episcopal Church for almost 24 years, and as a black male who has read and witnessed injustice all of my life, I thought it was important for me to come to you this morning and to make a statement about the verdict. For far too long in the American justice system, black people have had to play on an uneven legal playing field littered with prejudice, bias, and discrimination. And in legal cases that have involved the deaths of unarmed black males and females due to horrible policing, the game for justice has usually been canceled and not played at all. This past Tuesday, however, on April 20th, after waiting with bated breath, the world was able to witness a step towards justice when the verdict came back that Derek Chauvin was guilty on all three counts. This court decision not only declares Derek Chauvin was as guilty as the video showed, but this verdict says that George Floyd's life mattered, and it informs the citizens of this nation and abroad that black lives matter. Now, this verdict will not bring this brother back, nor will it fill the hole in the hearts of his loved ones who need to remain in our prayers. It can, however, breathe a sense of hope that when bad policing takes place, no one is above the law, and those who are involved will be held responsible and accountable for their actions in the courts. Now, there is still much work to be done. We as a people and those that believe in justice for all need to continue in the fight but clearly the American justice system must be overhauled and police reform is needed all over the land. But today, today we pause. We pause, we take a breath, and we say, thank you, God, for the victory. To each of you, I say, stay encouraged, keep the faith, and may God bless you. Thank you. Good morning, St. Stephen. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, we have reached the fourth Sunday in April. Aren't you just glad at what the Lord is doing in our lives? Uh, he has uh, blessed us in so many ways, and we're just excited to be able to worship the Lord one more time uh, on this morning. Uh, why don't you help me this morning? How to reach the masses. You all remember that one? Get, get, our, get our excitement level up uh, right now. Come on, there.
we sang, Stephen, we praise and thank God for another day. It's another day's journey, and we are glad about it. We are in, on the fourth Sunday in April. Uh, time is moving with swift transition, but we have the good news of knowing that the Lord said that he will be with us always. And so we know that as we gather on this day to lift up uh, the name of Jesus, we know that God's spirit is with us. Let the church say amen. amen. As we get ready to move forward in the things of God, I'm just going to ask that you would put aside anything that would distract you or keep you from giving God all of your praise. For, for truly God is deserving and worthy of all the praise. Wouldn't you agree? Let the church say amen. amen. So let us prepare our hearts and minds to, to give of ourselves, and let's see what God has in store for us on this day. Welcome, and I just, again, just thank you for being with us as we prepare our hearts to celebrate God. Let us now go forward and have our call to worship. Join me, if you will. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord yes. shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Yeah. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Together, O, o sing unto the Lord a new song, for, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing praises. And sing his praises we shall do as we sing hymn number 361, Yes, God is real. Let the church say amen. Yes, God is real. There are some things... I may not know. There are some places I can't go. But I am sure of this one thing, that God is real, for I can feel him deep within. Yes, God is real, real in my soul. Yes, God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. Yes, God is real. For I can feel him in my soul. Without any further lining, let us sing this marvelous hymn of the church together. I 
Let the church say amen. amen. Will you bow your heads with me in the word of prayer? Eternal God, our Father, we have gathered together again on this day. And we have come from our various places and stations in life with praise on our lips and thanksgiving in our hearts. God, we are so grateful as we gather on this day for all that you have done and all that you continue to do. You have proven yourself over and over again in our lives to be a great God. We thank you, Lord, for this time of gathering. And we just pray as we go further in this worship experience that your word would just be true. For you said that if we would come together, any two or three of us, that you would be in our midst. And so, God, we don't doubt your word, but we do ask that you would allow us to feel your presence one more time on this morning. Someone needs to know that you are bigger than their problems. Someone needs to know that you're stronger than their opponents. Someone needs to know that you're swifter than their pursuer. Someone needs to know that you're a God that can do anything but fail. So, Lord, we're asking not only for you to show up, but show yourself mighty one more time uh, in our lives. God, I'm so grateful for each person who has united with us. I pray, O oh Lord, that as we give of ourselves, that you would help us remove anything that would distract us from receiving your powerful word. For we want to be right, we want to be saved, and we want to be whole. Lord, we, sell, we say welcome into this place and simply have your way. And if there be any amongst us who don't know you, O oh God, today we're asking that you would touch their hearts. For those who may not have a church home, God, we pray that you would let them know that this is a place that they can come and be a part of. God, come on in and, and again, just do a marvelous work in our lives. And we will continue to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise that you so rightly deserve. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray that the people of God say, Amen. The scripture today will be coming from Luke chapter 10, verses 29 through 37. And he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at that place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Sumerian, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word.
Good morning, good morning, good morning, St. Stephen family and friends, and welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. Weekly activities are on the screen, Bible study on Tuesday and Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., prayer every Wednesday morning at 5 a.m., the soup kitchen serving hot meals as takeout from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Wednesday and Thursday, and on Sunday, the Sunday school lesson at 8.15 a.m., our worship service at 10 a.m. A great bit thank you to the anniversary committee for a job well done for our 149th church anniversary celebration. Kudos to Sister Kimberly Puckett, who headed up the committee, along with Sister Loretta Jackson, Sister Karanika Carney, Sister Tamara Steele, and Sister Olinta Smith. It was an awesome celebration, and Reverend Dr. Peonita Harris just blessed our souls tremendously. Again, thank you, and great job. Another thank you goes out to Sister Carmen Reed. She and her husband, Julian, joined us last year, and she is the editor of the newsletter. Sister Carmen came to us with the idea and then took ownership. Our aim is to keep everyone updated on events as we receive information. Again, thank you, Sister Carmen, for your willingness to serve, and great job. Don't forget the next Sunday, May 2nd, is First Sunday and also Communion Sunday. So make sure you have your chips or your wafers, your juice or your water so that you can take communion and invite family and friends to join you in service on that day. The 40 to 60 ministry will be hosting a seminar on mental health on Sunday, May 16th at 1130 a.m. It will be facilitated by our own First Lady, the Reverend Erica Bailey. Zoom information will be available soon, and we will make sure that that information gets out so that you may come and join in on this seminar. April birthdays and anniversaries are on the screen. We send blessings to everyone who celebrated this past week. In November, we had our church conference. And at that time, we asked each of our members to make a sacrificial gift of $300 that was to be over and above your tithe and offering. This sacrificial gift was to cover the donation request for our annual Men and Women's Day services, as well as our church anniversary. There are a couple ways that you can give. One, by making the full payment of $300, or you can make installments with the full balance being paid by July 31st, 2021, which is the end of our conference year. Several members have already paid the entire amount and some are making installments. And we thank you very much for those who have paid and are paying. You may use PayPal, Cash App, or Check. Make sure that you designate that it is for the sacrificial giving. And all checks should be made out to St. Stephen AME Church. All monies received, as usual, will help us to continue to do ministry and to keep the church operating. Again, thank you and have a wonderful week. Thank you for giving generously to what God is doing through the church family at St. Stephen. There are several ways to give. You can give in person. Just drop your contribution in the mail slot of the church. You can also participate in online giving. Online giving through PayPal is fast, convenient, and secure. You can set this up as a one-time donation or reoccurring gift. Visit the church website at www.ststephenchicago.org. Please designate in the memo section if your gift is a tithe, offering, general contribution, or targeted to a special ministry. You can also give through Cash App at dollar sign S-S-A-M-E-C-H-G-O. And lastly, you can give by mail. Send your contribution to the St. Stephen AME Church. The church's address is 3042 West Washington Boulevard, Chicago, Illinois, 60612, Attention, Finance Department. Be sure to include your name and address on the check so that a record of your contribution can be provided for tax purposes. the 
Let the church say amen. Bow your heads with me, if you will. Lord, we thank you for this time that we have been able to share together. You have been true to your word. We have felt your presence on this day. We have felt you through the prayers that have been prayed, through the songs that have been sung, through the scripture and the word that has gone forth. Now, Lord, I ask that you would be no less God in this moment. Speak to me and speak through me. Speak a word that might encourage, enlighten, and empower your people. God, do what only you can do, and we shall be satisfied. Lord, we say thank you. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray that the people of God say amen. Hear God's word. Our scripture lesson for this day comes out of the gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. We're lifting up verses 29 through 37. Uh, I have a new international version that we're reading from, and it reads as follows. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after, look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have had. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Thus ends the reading. May God add a blessing to the reader, hearer, and doers of God's holy word. I want to continue on in the uh, series that we started, uh, a downward glance with an upward view. As you remember, we're taking a, a few moments to share from the parables that Jesus spoke in the book of Luke. As you remember also, when you're dealing with a parable, a parable has to do with looking at earthly matters, uh, but seeing the a heavenly insight that they provide for us. And today we see this in Luke 10, verses 29 through 37. From this passage of scripture that we shared, I want to uh, raise this question. What's the difference? What's the difference? The parable shared in our lesson for this morning, morning comes out of a larger body of scripture, beginning with the 25th verse. In it, Jesus is responding to an expert in the law that has stood up to test him. Of course, we get it because there were always those who wondered if Jesus was as wise as he appeared to be or as others had claimed. It also is not surprising because those that heard of his notoriety wanted to see if he was worthy of the, of the attention that he was receiving. The expert of the law came to Jesus and he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, although this was not the center or the thrust of our reading for this morning, I do want us to know that this conversation that precedes our parable does come into play because it tells us that love is the currency of the kingdom and the means of exchange for those that claim to love God. Why? Because love brings us into compliance meaning that we comply with the way of God. It shows our commitment, our commitment to the will of God. Love completes us. Uh, it allows us to know the aim of God for our lives. We also know love to cover us, meaning it covers all of our shortcomings. And then when you look at love, love uh, deals with compassion, which allows us to care for the people of God. When this man asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, how is it that you read it? And the expert of the law said, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength and with all of your mind. And then he added, 
and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus told him, you have answered correctly. And then he said, do this and live. Now, when you look at this text, here we have this uh, expert of the law coming to Jesus, raising this question. But when Jesus asked him, how do you read it? He was able to respond to Jesus with the correct information. It lets us know that this expert, when he came to Jesus, was not coming to ask a question in order that he might be able to learn. But he was thinking that he might be able to trip Jesus up. Now, this is the place where everyone says, thank God that Pastor Bailey is not Jesus. For had he come to me, I would have just said to him, what did you ask me this for? If you think you already know the answer and then to further the cause, the man says to Jesus, uh, who is it that is my neighbor? Well, I've said to you on a number of occasions that the greatest tragedy in the world is to have everything that you need and not recognize that you possess it. But what ranks high up there is to also think that you're smarter than what you really are. And this is the case that we run into as we look at this expert of the law. He thinks he's smarter than he really is. But Jesus shows him through this parable that though he may know about uh, eternal life, he doesn't necessarily possess it. And I share that with you today because I want you to know as it relates to eternal life, talking about not just uh, the quantity of life, but the quality of life. I want us to know that eternal life is not about position. It's not about prestige. It's not about power, meaning it's not about whatever title you may have. It's not about your fame, and it's not also about the influence that you may wield with those that you come in contact with. Hear the this, hear this scripture one more time. It says a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, they beat him, and they went away, leaving him half dead. Then these words, a priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed on the other side. I said to you just a moment ago that eternal life is not about position, it's not about prestige, and it's not about power. Something that the priest and the Levite had. They all both have position, they both have prestige, they both had a certain amount of power. But when we look at this text, what we don't witness is we don't witness them stop to see about this man's condition and what it is that he's going through. But then we have to look at this Samaritan and the word says this. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to the inn, and took care of him. When you look at this text, we're talking about the Samaritan. And here's what we know or we're reminded about the Samaritan, that the Samaritan did not have position or title. The Samaritan did not have prestige or fame. The Samaritan did not have power or influence. But something about this Samaritan made him do what was right in the eye of God. The question is, what, what caused him to do what the priest was unwilling to do? What caused him to act in such a way that the Levite would not do the same thing? Well, what it is, is he had the presence of God with him. And that's what makes the difference. It's the presence of God that makes the difference. Again, it's not about position, not about prestige, not about power, but it is about the presence. And when you have the presence of God in your life, it does move you. That, that love that God has of working through you, it moves you to be compliant. It moves you to have commitment. It moves in such a way that it completes you. It moves where you are covered and it allows you to move with compassion, which is what we see in this text. This man had compassion 
And it's all because he possessed the presence of God. I know this world that we live in will try to encourage you to be on top, uh, to, to, to have all of the power, to have all of the money. But all of those things mean nothing at all if you do not have the presence of God on the inside of you. Because it's the presence of God that not only works in you, but it also causes you to please God. And that's what we need. We need the presence of God in our lives. Someone say amen. It is the presence that makes the difference. And those of you who gather with me on this day, you know that this is more than just a sermon. But we also know that this represents our lives, not because we were the priests, not, not because we were the Levite, not because we were the Samaritan. But when we look at our own lives, we've had moments where we were the man that was left in the road, the man that was beat by the circumstance, the man or the woman that was beat by the circumstances of life and were left for dead. But I thank God for this parable because it not only speaks about who our neighbor is, but it also reminds us of what the Lord has actually done in our lives. Some of us would have gave up a long time ago when those winds blew in or when that flood came, when the people turned against us, when we lost the job, when we went through the divorce. Many of us would have thrown in the towel. But just as this parable shares with us on this day, Somebody came to see about us. They came exactly where we were. They didn't wait for us to get better, but they came when we were down. And that's what Jesus did. This parable is not just about the Samaritan, but it also talks about how Jesus moved in our lives. Because there was a time that we can say we were on the side of the road, but Jesus came to where we were. Somebody ought to say, man, Jesus had Pity upon our lives. Other folks said that they were done with us. But Jesus said, I'm not done with you yet. He had pity upon our souls. He came and he bandaged up our wounds where we were hurting, where we were sore, where we were in pain. He came to not only see about us, but he also took care of us. The parable talked about that the oil was poured out and the wine was poured out. Well, we don't necessarily say it was the oil or the wine that was poured out, but how many of you can say that we have been covered by the blood? Come on, somebody ought to say, I've been covered by the blood of Jesus, and it has made a difference in our lives. But that's not all that took place. Not only was were we covered by the blood of Jesus, but this parable said, that Jesus took this man and put him on his beast. In other words, he allowed the man to put his weight upon the beast that was carrying him. And that's what Jesus did for us. He took our sins. Come on, talk to me, somebody. He took our sins and he bore them up on a old rugged cross. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus, for bearing my sins. He bore our sins on that cross taking that burden up off of our lives. Just as the Samaritan took care of this man, those of you who are with me on this day, you can say that Jesus has taken care of you. We can say Jesus has taken care of us. Like the psalmist, where would we be if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side? The presence of the Lord has made a difference. And because of that presence, Today we can say we have joy because of that presence. Today we can say we have peace because of that presence. We can say we know the love of God because of that presence. We can say that we have been forgiven because of that presence. We have running in our feet. We have clapping in our hands. We have a new song in our hearts because of the presence of God. What's the difference the difference is the presence. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus, for being there. Thank you, Jesus, for being by my side. Thank you, Jesus, for not allowing me to walk by myself. The presence of God has been in our lives. And as a result, it has made a difference. Let the church say, amen. Well, we praise and we thank God for the difference that the Spirit of God 
of the presence of God has made in our lives. We were by the side of the road, but today we're standing and we're standing strong because of the goodness of God. And we praise and we thank God for who he is and who he is in our lives. Maybe you heard this word on today and it's touched you, it's impacted you, and you're saying, listen, I need to know this Jesus. Well, I'm here to tell you that you can know Jesus today. You just simply say, Lord, come into my life and forgive me of my sins. I want to turn away from the world. And now what I want to do is I want to turn toward you. And I'm here to let you know that the Lord will save you. Yes, just like the Samaritan came and saw about that individual, that man that was down. I got good news for you that the Lord will come and see about you. Call him, try him, see if the Lord won't take care of you. Maybe you're with us on this day and you do not have a church home. Well, everyone needs to have, needs to have a place where they can call home. And I want to invite you to come and be a part of St. Stephen Amy Church. Listen, I've been blessed by being here and I want to let you know that you'll be blessed by being a part of us as well. We'll welcome you the same way that God welcomed us. Amen. So if you're making a decision today to give your life to Christ, or if you're deciding to join us uh, as a body of, uh, as a part of St. Stephen AME Church, listen, we welcome you. Reach out to us. There's an email address that is on the screen. If you will contact us, someone will get back in contact with you. Uh, they will pray with you. Uh, they'll praise God for you. And they will welcome you into the family of God. Maybe you're listening to me this morning and you're saying, Reverend, that I'm, I can't say that was me. I'm saying that's me right now. I feel as if I'm on the side of the road. I'm going through hardships. I'm going through struggles. I'm going through difficulties. I want to let you know that the Lord will meet you right now and that the Lord will take care of you. Just as they, we saw in this parable, that's what the Lord has in store for you. You just simply need to say, Lord, come see about me and the Lord will see about you. We're going to stand with you this day uh, in faith, believing and trusting that God is able to nav navigate past all the other circumstances and can meet you and will meet you at your point of need. If it's not you, but you know someone else, well, come on, we'll stand together with them in faith too. Amen. Let us go to the Lord together in prayer. Bow your heads with me, if you will. Eternal God, we are grateful for this time that we have been able to share on this morning. We thank you for your word. We recognize that it's not about position. It's not about prestige. It's not about power, but it's about your presence, oh God. And we thank you for your presence on this day. You have shown up one more time, one more time in our lives and what a difference it has made. We come on this morning, Heavenly Father, praying for our brothers and sisters who may be going through great heartache and pain. Uh, sometimes we want to quit. Sometimes we want to give up. But this word said that you came to see about that man. You came to where he was. And we're believing wherever uh, that brother or sister may be stationed at on this day, Lord, that you will meet them right there and that you will see about them, that you will care for them. We lift them up, Heavenly Father, believing and trusting that you are a God of deliverance, that you are the God that makes a difference in our lives. Then, Lord, for those who have made a decision on this day to either give their life to you, asking you to become their Savior, or those who say that they want to unite with the church, or maybe they did both, Lord, we say thank you. We praise God and we give you the honor and glory. And Lord, the same way that you received us and the same way that uh, you were filled with joys with our de decision, God, we're filled with joy because of their decision on this day. We just ask that you would just bless them, touch them, keep them and hold them and use them, Heavenly Father, for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Lord, again, we thank you for this time that we've been able to share one with another. Our souls have been blessed. Now, as we're preparing to conclude this worship experience, we want to say thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, and what has entered into the heart of men and women. Now, not unto us, but unto him who is able to keep us safe from falling and present us faultless before the King. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus, the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Let every heart say, Amen. 
But praise the Lord, saints. We've had a wonderful worship service on this day. I'm so grateful for your presence. I thank you for being with us. As I've said before, there's so many things that you could be doing, but I'm glad that you chose to be with us. We're coming together again on next week. If God says the same, and we want to welcome you and or invite you to come and join us uh, to be a part of our worship service again. Uh, listen, thank you so much for being with us on this day. I pray that each of you will have a most uh, blessed afternoon. Take care.